Dear Professor, dear Chairman, thank you for uh, nice words. Uh, I would like to thank the scientific committee for uh, inviting me in order to present uh, the very interesting topic of intracorporeal laser lithotripsy. So as we all know, uh, in order to treat a kidney stone, there are several factors. These would do with the stone per se, size, number, composition, with renal anatomy, for example, if you've got hydronephrosis, where the stone is, and with several clinical parameters, such as the presence of infection and other parameters like obesity, body habitus, if the patient is taking anticoagulation medication, if we've got children, etc. So once we've diagnosed the kidney stone, we're going to decide if we're going to proceed with ESWL, with a PERC, or with a flexi ureteroscopy. Nowadays, flexi ureteroscopy has made uh, enormous uh, progression because from a simple diagnostic procedure, it has become now a pure therapeutic procedure. And we've got more and more flexible ureteroscopies performed, as we can see in the UK. Actually, in these years, updated uh, EAU guidelines, we can see that uh, flexible ureteroscopy has not uh, been, uh, and how do we go backwards? Yes. Like this, thank you. Uh, so we can see that uh, for even stones two centimeter and above, we don't uh, separate a perk from a flexi ureteroscopy nowadays. We put both under the umbrella of endourology. And this is very important because it means that we can use more efficiently the flexible ureteroscopy to treat a big stone. And to be honest, uh, it's very easy once you've advanced a safety wire to approach a kidney stone, but it's very difficult with a perk to approach such easily a stone through the natural route. So once we are talking about the guidelines, we can see that uh, the most uh, efficient uh, laser system is the Holmium laser. It's more efficient than the old neodymium laser. It has a minimal tissue penetration uh, depth of uh, 0 0.4 millimeters. We have to be in contact with the stone and the level of evidence of risk recommendation is three and the grade of recommendation is B. We've got other laser systems but they are still being evaluated and they haven't proven their superiority. We'll go through this later on. So our great progress is uh, for the time being with the digital ureteroscopes that uh, we've got the chip on the tip technology and uh, we can actually have uh, a better view and uh, that means that once we see better a stone we can treat it uh, even more efficiently with a laser as we can see in this study and in these nice pictures. Many colleagues will be afraid that uh, by using a laser inside a flexiscope, they'll damage the very expensive uh, scope. But uh, technology has progressed even in this uh, uh, aspect. And we've got, uh, for example, uh, for the Gyrus ACMI digital uh, scope, the endoscope protection uh, system, where actually the sensor on the tip uh, of the scope uh, will uh, see if there is some glading or no glading, and if there is no glading, then you are unable to fire the laser. And this is very important because it prevents from damaging an expensive scope. Uh, some uh, studies have been done with uh, some laser sheaths, but actually they've got the disadvantage of uh, uh, having reduced uh, flexibility. Now, Regarding the updated literature, these are two papers from 2012, we have several variables regarding the laser per se, that is uh, the wavelength, the pulse duration, and the pulse energy, and several other physical properties regarding the stone per se. Actually, uh, the conclusion of such studies is that we have got two different directions of uh, progress. These have to do with uh, improving the existing holium laser, and uh, in particular, this has to do with uh, developing new fibers that would be more flexible, economic, and long-lasting. And the other direction is developing novel laser platforms, and we'll go through it later as well. 
Of course, uh, there is not only the issue of having uh, nice gadgets like this uh, escape basket that will prevent migration of the stone and uh, through this uh, uh, working channel you can put uh, actually the laser and inside the basket you can fragment it. But you need to know how to laser a stone. This year, a few months ago, uh, Desai from India published a very nice Surge Illustrated article regarding the technique of laser in a stone. There are actually three techniques. We've got the painting technique for soft stones, and uh, for harder stones, we can have the drilling technique. We use lower settings here, higher settings uh, in uh, this technique. Uh, so we've got uh, fragments in this uh, um, situation, and uh, all these fragments uh, at the end uh, could be popcorn uh, after um, uh, having them in a calice, for example. So it's very important uh, to decide uh, which technique you're going to use. Uh, personally, I suggest the painting uh, technique because uh, then you don't need to change all these fragments. And if these fragments are, for example, in a calice, it's okay, but um, sometimes you have to chase it uh, throughout the whole collecting system. Even uh, in cases of stones in diverticulums, uh, laser can be quite useful in uh, um, incising um, the infidibulum and uh, creating more working space uh, for our lasering. Let's go through several uh, current uh, publications regarding, uh, for example, the optimal uh, power settings for holium uh, laser studies, as this published in uh, JURL uh, this year, has, have shown that uh, while we increase uh, the uh, energy setting from 0 0.2 to 2, we've got uh, uh, more fragmentation and uh, more retropulsion. So if we use bigger energy levels, maybe we need to use anti uh, retropulsion devices, such as uh, the accordion, the stone cone, or others that we'll see later on. Uh, the most uh, used uh, settings are uh, uh, 0 0.8 to 1 joule energy-wise, 10 hertz uh, frequency-wise, and that will uh, produce a 10 watt uh, power. And this is uh, the most uh, uh, used um, uh, setting uh, by urologists. And uh, in this study, for example, you can see if we use uh, devices at the accordion or the backstop, we may have uh, better efficacy. But don't forget, these devices are expensive. Um, OCT uh, figures of um, such laser settings uh, will show us for different uh, composition of stones, different depth uh, inside the, the stone. For example, with a two joule uh, energy setting, for uh, uh, calcium oxalate monohydrate, uric acid stone, or struvit uh, stone. Uh, this uh, graphic also will show us in the setting of one jowl the differences between the compositions and of the stones, and very interesting, struvit stones are uh, softer, so will be fragmented easier. Uh, and this is quite important because, for example, uh, novel uh, micro CT imaging, which was uh, introduced last year by Ligerman, uh, shows us that uh, actually a stone uh, has different uh, uh, composition uh, uh, throughout uh, the position of the stone, and this has to do with the exposure of the stone to urine. For example, uh, we've got uh, uh, different composition uh, when we are inside the collecting system or inside the duct. Let's go through some uh, other studies that will compare uh, uh, holium laser lithotripsy with pneumatic lithotripsy because it's very important for us to know as uh, most of our colleagues are performing rigid ureteroscopy and uh, many of us uh, are using either the pneumatic or the laser. Uh, a meta-analysis uh, from China has shown uh, that actually the laser is uh, quite superior in uh, terms of early and late stone-free rate, mean operating time, um, the need for a JJ catheter in situ, and stone migration. Actually, this meta-analysis was based uh, on four studies. Uh, these are the four studies, and the number of patient is not, patients is not so big, but it shows the results that uh, were demonstrated before. Let's go to the other parameter of large ureteric stones. This paper was published again this year from uh, 
Egypt, we can see that uh, for stones more than one centimeter, when we compare the laser with the pneumatic uh, uh, device, the fragmentation time is actually, uh, is actually less uh, in the laser group, and the stone migration rate is as well less in the laser group. These uh, results were compared to other results available in the literature, and they were pretty much the same. So uh, it's a myth that when you use the laser, you uh, are very delayed uh, in uh, your operation. If you want to have a patient stone-free, then it's more efficient uh, than the pneumatic, and you don't need to chase uh, uh, onto other fragments. Let's go to another um, very uh, difficult clinical entity of impacted ureteric stones. These are the most difficult stones to treat. Sometimes you cannot even pass a, a safety wire next to the impacted ureteric stone. Again, the holmium laser is uh, superior to the uh, pneumatic uh, uh, lithotripsy. And actually, the same parameters were studied, uh, less operating time, uh, less need for a JJ catheter in situ, better stone-free results, and uh, less auxiliary uh, modalities uh, necessary. What about children? Professor Sharik uh, uh, very nicely demonstrated uh, the uh, usefulness of uh, flexible ureteroscopy uh, in children. Uh, the laser is the gold standard in such cases with uh, a very small uh, complication rate and a very big stone-free rate. Another very interesting issue, many of us uh, deal with patients that uh, should not stop their anticoagulation medication. So what about uh, um, having uh, a stone patient with bleeding diathesis, a meta-analysis uh, which was published this year uh, by Monga showed that uh, in uh, 73 procedures uh, we had 88% uh, uh, of stone-free rate and uh, only 4% of uh, myron breeding with a holmium lithotripsy. For stones uh, that are above 2 centimeters, that's uh, uh, the new thing that I've told you what even the guidelines we're dealing with, uh, a systematic review of uh, nine uh, uh, publications uh, showed that uh, it's quite efficient to have uh, the laser intracorporeal lithotripsy. Uh, and actually, there was a subgroup, uh, two to three centimeters, that uh, our cost effectiveness was quite good. So once we are saying about uh, Speaking about uh, stones above two centimeters, uh, the subgroup two to three centimeters seems to be the ideal one. Um, this is another uh, study two years ago from a multi-institutional um, group uh, that sets uh, most of the indications, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, several factors, anatomical comorbidities, failed prior operations, um, solitary kidney, chronic renal failure and anticoagulation treatment. Uh, very interesting is the fact that uh, with the flexi laser uh, lithotripsy, uh, ne nearly 80% of the patients could go home uh, the same day. So it could be done uh, in an outpatient basis. Another study from Italy confirms these results, uh, and the mean uh, need for um, uh, URS uh, session was uh, actually uh, two sessions for these big stones. We can see this in detail here. What about cost effectiveness? When we compare the flexi ureteroscopy uh, to a PERC, uh, obviously the flexi operation is uh, more uh, cheap uh, than uh, the PERC. Uh, what about efficacy? If we use the term of uh, clinically significant uh, residual fragments, that means if we are not uh, so worried about fragments that are less than four millimeters, then we could see that uh, we've got an equal efficacy. A very interesting aspect is actually to use the laser while doing a perk. And this is the story of the mini perk, where uh, a very good group from uh, China performed uh, laser lithotripsy with the mini perk, actually using uh, uh, a big setting of uh, 30 watt. Uh, and uh, they could treat uh, stones uh, with a mean size, 5.5 millimeters, with uh, an operative time less than uh, two hours. And uh, they had uh, this very impressive result uh, in their publication in urology again this year. 
Another interesting aspect of uh, uh, using a laser for intracorporeal lithotripsy is when uh, we've got uh, BPH uh, with uh, bladder lithiasis. As we all know, bladder lithiasis is a result of uh, BPH that uh, causes obstruction. Um, a study again from this year uh, showed us that uh, they used uh, the um, green light laser for uh, treating BPH and the holmium laser for treating the stone and the operative time uh, was uh, not more than two hours for a prostatic volume of uh, 55 grams. More and more research is going on, uh, as I told you before, regarding new fibers, uh, such, for example, uh, the uh, uh, Flexiva fiber that uh, showed us in in vitro studies that uh, it's uh, quite uh, interesting in terms of efficacy, but uh, clinical studies will confirm or not uh, these new fibers. What about uh, non-holmium laser systems? Uh, uh, there is a lot of research uh, going on. We've got the Freddy laser that it's uh, actually being used. Uh, it seems to be more efficient than the Holmium laser in vitro studies, but it has a drawback of uh, having uh, a higher uh, retropulsium uh, um, percentage in comparison with the Holmium laser. Uh, so stone uh, retropulsium is uh, higher with the Freddy laser. Uh, very interesting is the erbium laser, erbium young laser, that it's uh, more effective than uh, the holmium laser. However, we don't have available fibers that could be used uh, in practice. The thulium laser is very well known uh, for uh, prostate uh, BBH treatment. Um, however, again, the available fibers are very small ones. But still research is going ahead with these non-holmium laser systems. And uh, one of the parameters that uh, we test uh, for this new laser system is actually the impact of collateral damage uh, to endoyological tools. Actually, this uh, group uh, has um, demonstrated a grading of this uh, uh, damage uh, from uh, 0 to 4. And uh, it has concluded that uh, these new uh, laser systems can uh, uh, cause less damage uh, to our uh, endocrinological tools because we may be very careful uh, when we're doing lithotripsy, but uh, by mistake we may melt or uh, cut uh, our safety wire. And then we have uh, to deal with it. Sometimes we need to do a perk in order to take a, uh, a part of it out. So the encouraging uh, thing is that uh, research is still going on uh, with uh, laser lithotripsy, and the most encouraging thing is that even in non-urological uh, uh, journals like this that I've put at the end, uh, we've got uh, such publications regarding new techniques uh, like uh, micro pulse uh, train, for example. At this point, I would like to thank you for your attention. I don't know if you've got any questions to take.